one thing that's kind of exciting, I think, about Billups is the as our head coach moving forward is he can, he can relate to a lot of the guys we have on our team. He's been a top pick in the draft, so he can kind of relate to Shaden Sharp. He's been an NBA Finals MVP on a small market team, which is hopefully where Dame's headed. He's been a journeyman, which we've got a lot of guys who are new to the team who have just been traded there. So he really should be able to be kind of a common link between a lot of our, our players. What's up, guys? Welcome to From the Logo. We're on TikTok at From the Logo Show, and find us on Spotify at the link in the description. Also, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Ding! Ring that bell. See what I did there. Switch up. The comment of the week comes from Mark when he said, I hope Nasir starts, but I'm afraid Billups will go with Hart. Nas is an offensive dunking beast. He can block and ready to prove himself further. He is an offensive dunking beast. We'll see what Billups does with the starting lineup at the three. I think it's a big question for the Blazers. Please healthy, Nas. One season. <laughs> Please healthy. I think it's one of the biggest questions we have this season is what's that three spot going to look like? In this video, we're continuing our series making the case for why a Blazer could, should, and will win every regular season award that the NBA has to offer. That's the, the kind of season we're running for here. <laughs> this time, we're making the case for Chauncey Billups to win the Red Auerbach Trophy, the NBA Coach of the Year. He's got a, a roster overhaul on his hands that he's had from last season, and I think that the philosophy of the roster building has shifted more towards what Billups wants to run with his sets mostly on defense. So it's really going to be interesting to see now that he has more players that fit his mantra, how he coaches them up mm -hmm. uh, a lot of young, hungry players. So I know that he's kind of a good motivator just from last year, having seen it with like Simons and things like that. When they were tanking, he still was able to kind of keep the guys together and play some respect. It was funny. I, we were like trying to lose. We kept taking players off the floor and we kept somehow finding ways to win. And it's like, okay, we have to take these players off the floor too until we were left with Drew Eubanks and Reggie Perry. I mean, and that just speaks to the kind of like game plan that Billups has been able to put out there. It almost didn't matter who we put on the floor. They were still running the same offense. They were playing hard and trying really hard on defense. And that's really what I think he's going to bring to the team is that defensive mentality. And, you know, no one ever wants to admit this because everyone wants to say it's just the GM doing their job and trying to build the best team they can. But it really seems like this is a team that was built for Billups. It seems like he had had to have had some input on the kind of direction that we went, bringing in a lot of defensive guys, bringing in some toughness guys, uh, making some pretty huge changes, getting rid of that, you know, we love Terry Stotts, I always will, but it was a very offensive, Shout out Terry Stotts. It was a very offensive centric team that we had for years and years and years, and it seems like we're going away from that, trying to come out in with some more balance, which I think is where he comes in. It's kind of funny how we really, it feels like the Blazers really built around Dame, obviously rebuilt around Dame, but also Billups. Is mm -hmm. like, those are like the two kind of franchise centerpieces that we chose to, to base our rebuild around. It's hard to compare last year to this year's numbers-wise because we saw a historically bad tanking stretch where the Blazers were losing by about 30 points per game because of the players on the floor on purpose yeah <laughs> I think one thing you can look at uh we were average in pace last year out of the league rank it was 98.3 and that was 16th in the league I'm wondering if we're going to play faster at all with all the young studs that you got going on there or if that was just a product of the tanking mm -hmm. um, where we're going to stand on that note because if you look at other numbers such as Defense, defensive rating and offensive rating, we were 30th in the league in defensive rating and 27th in the league in offensive rating. But I don't yeah. think those numbers are something you could take no. a lot of stock into just because the tanking was so historic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just Crazy. obvious. Tanking. I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite that obvious. <laughs> I mean, it was trust the process <laughs> times two. It was pretty bad. It was because it happened halfway through the season, yeah. too. It wasn't like we were bad at the start. It's like we were decent at the start, and then Lillard went down, and we traded all these players and stuff. So it was like, we have to make up ground here in the loss column. We were on track for that just standard second-round sweep 
weep all the way up until <laughs> Dame went down. that, it might have been a first-round yeah. smack. Fighting in the play-in tournament. Yeah. But it'll play-in be interesting. Banners. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see now this year with, as you said, Chauncey's, Chauncey's team, it's or at least more now. so, yeah. coming in, give him a fresh start. He's not a rookie head coach anymore. What can he do to improve the team? Like what you said with uh, Stotts, this kind of very offensive-centric team, and mm-hmm. we had players around – Lillard that were offensive minded I think it's interesting to flip the script on that and have kind of a defensive minded head coach defensive players around because really Dame what else do you need on offense obviously you want to play good offense but when you have Damian Lillard who's just a wreck system he's just a wrecking ball on offense it's like it doesn't really matter all that you don't have to put like a bunch of super talented shot creators and stuff around him I mean it's nice to have I'm still okay with Simon's doing yeah. some of that work but and it's not like he's gonna forget how to play offense just because Stotts isn't there anymore right he's still gonna bring everything that he learned from Stotts and he's still got Nurk so he's still got his pick and roll partner yeah he still has a lot of that offensive system in place but the supporting cast is a lot more balanced and now that he has well you just said it defenders around him yeah. that's you spoke to you don't need all these shot creators around him you do need defenders around him. If, and size, length. Yeah, and hopefully he's got enough of that now that we can get a real look at what it's going to look like early on in this in this season. A good sign of uh, Billups' abilities to develop some of these young players too, I think, was last year with Simon's development. It's like he went from being a relegated bench player, like not even a sixth man, to becoming a guy that we're worth a hundred million dollars and that we're thinking could be an all star this upcoming season. So, so let's just hope his uh, coach of the year campaign goes as well as the last year's coach of the year, Monty Williams. He had a beautiful year last year, <laughs> including the playoffs game yeah. seven. <laughs> That's I just want Billups's trajectory to follow Monty's, and we'll be all set. One thing that's kind of exciting, I think, about Billups as the as our head coach moving forward is he can he can relate to a lot of the guys we have on our team. He's been a top pick in the draft, so he can kind of relate to Shaden Sharp. He's been an NBA Finals MVP on a small market team, which is hopefully where Dame's headed. He's been a journeyman, which we've got a lot of guys who are new to the team who have just been traded there. So he really should be able to be kind of a common link between a lot of our our players. He definitely had a storied career. He kind of fit every narrative, Mm -hmm. every position in the league. He's obviously got some stiff competition out there. There's a lot of good coaches in the league. Steve Kerr, reigning NBA champion. Ime Udoka. Not Udoka. (laughs) 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 Taylor Jenkins from the young and hungry Grizzlies roster. And guys like Ty Lue and Jason Kidd. Eric Spolstra is always lurking. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Popovich probably isn't in there anymore, but no. I just feel the need to throw his name in there. His roster, they're, yeah. they're tanking for Wimbanya. Or... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Wimbanyama, I think. Wimbanyama. Okay, cut that. Yeah, Michael Malone, maybe some of those. There's a, there's always kind of a. It could really be a crapshoot. It's just gonna depend on how everyone's seasons go. It's it's always hard to vote against Steve Kerr. He's usually the odds on favorite for good reason. It's eventually someone's gonna get some voter fatigue around him. But uh, I mean, he's just he's and don't forget Monty coach. Williams. He's definitely no controversy there. <laughs> gonna rally that team for another deep run, right, guys? What do you guys think? Who's going to win Coach of the Year this upcoming season? Comment below. Let us know. Thanks for watching from the logo.